प्लीज बी रेडी फॉर ए डिक्टेशन ऑफ ए मैटर ऑन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1935 टेकन फ्रॉम विकिपीडिया फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट इंडियंस हैड इंक्रीजिंगली बीन डिमांडिंग अ ग्रेटर रोल इन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ देयर कंट्री सिंस द लेट नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द इंडियन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द ब्रिटिश वॉर एफर्ट ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर मैंट दैट इवन द मोर कंजर्वेटिव एलिमेंट्स इन द ब्रिटिश पोलिटिकल एस्टेब्लिशमेंट फेल्ट द नेसेसिटी ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल चेंज रिजल्टिंग इन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन नाइनटीन that act introduced a novel system of government known as provincial diarchy that is certain areas of government such as education were placed in the hands of ministers responsible to the provincial legislature while others such as public order and finance were retained in the hands of officials responsible to the british appointed provincial governor while the act was a reflection of the demand for a greater role in government by indians it was also very much a reflection of british fears about what that role might mean in practice for india and of course for british interests there the experiment with diarchy proved satis- unsatisfactory a particular frustration for indian politicians was that even for those areas over which they had gained nominal control the purse strings were still in the hands of british official dum the intention had been that a review of india's constitutional arrangements would be held 10 years on from the 1919 act in the event the review was conducted ahead of time by the simon commission whose report proposed the scrapping of diarchy and the introduction of a much larger degree of responsible government in the provinces this proposal was controversial in britain demonstrating the rapidly widening gulf between british and indian opinions as to the desirability extent and the speed of progress towards the promised system of self government contained in the 1919 acts preamble although the simon commission had taken evidence in india it had met with opposition there and its conclusions were not accepted by congress the largest political party in an attempt to involve indians more fully in working out a new constitutional framework a series of round table conferences were then held in the early 1930s attended at times by representatives from india's main political parties as well as from the princely states agreement was reached in principle that a federal system of government should be introduced comprising the provinces of british india and those princely states that were willing to accede to it however division between congress and muslim representatives proved to be a major factor in preventing agreement on much of the important detail of how federation would work in practice the new conservative dominated national government in london decided to go ahead with drafting its own proposals white paper march 1933 a joint parliamentary select committee reviewed the white paper proposals for a year and a half between april 1933 and november 1934 amidst much opposition from winston churchill and other backbench conservatives the house of commons approved the joint select committee report in december after an emollient speech by conservative leader who stated that he respected the principled position of the bills opponents and that he did not wish feelings in his own party to become permanently embittered on the basis of the white paper the government of india bill was framed it was immensely long 
containing 473 clauses and 16 schedules and the reports of the debates took up 4000 pages at the committee stage and later to appease the die hards the safeguards were strengthened and indirect elections were reinstated for the central legislative assembly the central legislators lower house the opposition labor party opposed the third reading of the bill on the grounds that it contained no specific promise of dominion status for india it received royal assent and passed into law on 2nd august 1935 stop